What's the word, y'all? We got ourselves a series, ladies and gentlemen. After the Boston Celtics won game four, I came into this channel and I said, impressive win, but I'm not talking about this series no more until the Celtics take at least two games or the Miami Heat wrap it up. And here we are, going to a game six, going back to Miami, where uh, Heat fans are feeling a little bit of pressure, as they should. They should feel pressure. But they still get two chances to win one game, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But the Boston Celtics are two games away from pulling off the biggest comeback in NBA playoff history. But in the same token, the Miami Heat are one game away from being in the finals. So, again, I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm excited that we're getting the series. Because in the Western Conference, though, we got four real good bangers between the Lakers versus Nuggets. It was still just four games. And right now, with the Boston Celtics, where they're playing, they're trying to extend this thing. Jalen Brown said, don't let us get one. And then they got one. He said, don't let us get another. And then they got another. There have been teams in their history that have done this, right? That have been down 0-3 and then made the run to get to six or made the run to even get to seven. But nobody in NBA history have won that seventh game after being down 0-3. It's happened in baseball. It's happened in hockey. But it has not happened in the NBA. And I remember even before this game, I was listening to a bunch of podcasts that I respect. And they were saying like, hey, if there's any team to pull off the biggest comeback in playoff history... It is, it is this one, and I understood it because, again, I try to be as candid with y'all as possible. Before this series started, I picked the Boston Celtics to win, not because I thought that the Miami Heat weren't good because, obviously, they've been showing through the first two rounds that they are a hell of a team, even though they ended up in the play-in and lost the first play-in game. They showed us a would beat in Milwaukee and then beating up on, on the New York Knicks that this is a real legitimate team. So I didn't pick against the Miami Heat thinking that, that they were going to be weak, but more it was more the Boston Celtics have the recipe to win a series like this. The first three games, they use none of that recipe. N none of it. Through the regular season, the, the Boston Celtics were top three in total three-point makes, and they were top seven when it came to percentage. This is a high volume, high percentage three-point shooting team. And when I made my original prediction, I'm coming off the idea that in that Miami Heat versus New York Knicks series, though the Heat again pounded their chest in, they shot 29% from three that series. I know in Milwaukee, they was killing it in that series. But, like, they're coming off a series where they did not hit a ton of their threes. And the Boston Celtics, though they hadn't impressed me in their series against Atlanta or they didn't impress me in their, their series against the Philadelphia 76ers, I just kind of look at the volume of three-point shooting and what the Boston Celtics could have been and said, hey, that's the winner of the series. Again, I'm one win away from the Miami Heat from being wrong and two wins away for the Boston Celtics being right. But, again, I don't come here thinking right or wrong when I'm making my predictions because it's basketball at the end of the day. I think it's actually more fun when I'm wrong because that means the unexpected has happened. Either way, I, um, they mentioned on the broadcast that the Boston Celtics so far in this playoff run are, are undefeated when they, their team hits 15 threes. Makes sense. Again, we're talking about Missoula Ball, and Missoula Ball is highly analytical. It's like, we're going to shoot a lot of three-point shots. We're going to get to the basket sometimes, but more than likely, we're going to live and die by the three-pointer, and that's one of the reasons why they were one of the best offenses in basketball, because three is greater than two, and they got a decent amount of elite-level shooters. You saw that specifically in the first quarter. I mean, well, you saw it throughout the entire game, but the first quarter is where the momentum started, and, I mean, the game was over from the very beginning. Like, we, I did always feel like the Miami Heat were good for a really good run because the Boston Celtics do have a history of getting up by 10 to 15 points and immediately not being able to know how to shoot the ball. And when they don't shoot the ball, then they don't know how to get to the basket or they don't know how to take the mini. But today, again, the, the shots were falling. But I did think the Miami Heat was going to go on a nice little run, but they didn't. And we're going to talk about that after we, we talk about that first quarter because, yeah, it was... It was something, man. The TD Garden is rocking. And every once in a while, and I understand Jason Tatum has been All-NBA first team two times in his young career already. Like, the league has determined that Jason Tatum is one of the best in basketball. He's been a top two player at his position, according to the voters, for a few years now. Again, that has to do a lot with some injuries here. here. But I'm just saying, like, the resume says that Jason Tatum is him, even though he's had times, specifically in this series, where he couldn't score in the fourth quarter, or he has some turnovers, where he's traveling, yada, yada, yada. But there's times where you, you see him come out in the first quarter and you're like, oh my God, this man, Jason, I understand all of the hype because it is real and this is what you got today. Now, it didn't stand for the entirety of the game, but they didn't need it to. But in that first quarter, I think he was monumental in setting the tempo and, and the idea behind the game. He was getting to the basket, he was hitting shots, and there was a ton of energy. When I, when I watched this game, and there was one specific no moment where I was like, okay, the Boston Celtics look like they're going to wrap this up. And we're talking first quarter. It was a play where Al Horford was on the glass like he was Dennis Rodman. And I'm like, oh, he's putting in that type of effort. Oh, Marcus Smart just hit two threes in the first quarter. Yeah, 
this might be a quick win for the Miami Heat. And it ended up being so much so that Eric Spolster and them start thinking towards game six and didn't even play J uh, Bam or Jimmy Butler in the fourth quarter. So Tatum had an amazing fourth quarter, and that's what's going to be talked about a ton because he had the big dunk. Um, he's talking to the crowd, yada, yada, yada. But we cannot look past what Derek White also did simultaneously in that first quarter, also hitting, I think, three threes in the first alone. He's just been really good. And it it's interesting because, you know, when we get to playoff basketball, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it is picking matchups and finding mismatches that empower your best players to play their best ball. And in this series so far, we've seen a lot of Jimmy Butler going at Derrick White. And it's not saying that Derrick White is a bad defender because Derrick White made an all-defensive team this season. But out of the starting five of this team, out of the collection of players, he might be the weakest link as far as when it comes to the size and everything. Like, no, I know Marcus Smart and him are very similar in height, but he is built differently. Marcus Smart built like a, like a fire hydrant. So Jimmy Butler was going to him. If you look at the percentages of Jimmy Butler when he's guarded by Derek White, they're pretty damn good. So to see him come out and, again, continue to shoot so well, it's just like nullif nullifies, nullifies? Completely eliminates um, a lot of the hunting of him because he's getting it back ten times 10. Also in that first quarter, they were turning the Miami Heat over like no other. I don't know how many they ended up with. But it was like clockwork. Boom, 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 boom. Kyle Lowry gets a slurred and uh, insert into the starting lineup. And like, he ain't never played basketball before. I mean, he had been really good previously coming off the bench. I guess he just can't start. He's just a super six man because he put him in the lineup, then he struggles. Second quarter comes around, and this is where we get to see Jalen Brown play pretty much his best quarter of the series. I mean, for the first couple games, even the one that they won, it felt like he was... His powers had got taken away from him on some Space Jam type stuff because he was doing things that he normally don't do. And Reggie Miller was talking about on the call how he thinks that Jalen Brown's hand has been best messing with him. And that's how he's shooting uh, such poor percentages from the free throw line. Like his jump shooting is at an all-time low. I think he was shooting like 20% on jump shots, which is mind-blowing you really think about it. But that quarter was like, okay, that's the Jalen Brown that made an all-NBA team. And then you get around to the second half. All you have to do if you're the boss of Celtics is maintain some energy play good defense, and you win the game, and that's exactly what they did. On the other side, man, I, I was pretty disappointed in the performance we got from Jimmy Butler. There's, there's times, and again, I've been watching Jimmy for a long time since he was drafted here in Chicago, and I got to see his progression as a player. Um, th there's times where Jimmy Butler basically decides that he doesn't want to shoot the basket. And it, it's mind-blowing to me, considering the stakes in this game, that he ended up with, I think, 10 shot attempts on the entire game. Now, part of that is he, he is a pump fake machine. Like one of the best features for Jimmy Butler is that he draws a ton of fouls. Whether you like it or not, it's a feature of his game and he's damn good at it. Um, this is one of those games where he was looking for that more than he probably should have been looking for. Pump fake, pump fake, pump fake. Oh, they not biting on it no more. All right, let me give it off to somebody else. Instead of the aggression that we've seen throughout this playoff run for him, this was probably his weakest game of the playoffs completely so far. Um, he went to the podium after the game, and he pretty much guaranteed a game six win. So I'm guessing that means that he's going to come out with the aggression that we've seen from him. But this is a game that, especially with Gabe Vincent being that was a huge blow, by the way. I, I know people are sliding on the rug. Gabe Vincent was averaging 17 points per game on 58% shooting, 50% from three this series. Like, Gabe Vincent is one of them boys. He's been one of the best players for the Miami Heat. So with him being out, of course, Hero still being out, we need our two best players to be that, and you didn't get that from Jimmy or Bam today. We mentioned how the Boston Celtics are undefeated when they hit 15 threes, today they hit 16. Um, the Miami Heat are also undefeated when Bam Adebayo scores 20-plus points, and today... It, it was it was an ugly one, one man, for sure. Uh, a lot more turnovers than you want from Bam Adebayo. And again, he, he wasn't scoring at the same rate that he had been in some of those previous wins. So when your top two players are not performing to their capabilities and you're also under man, it's just going to be really, really hard to win those games. And the, maybe the crazier thing is they shot the three-point ball pretty solidly. I, the volume was probably lower than what it normally would be. And again, that's some of that's because Gabe Vincent is not there to help out. Every, like he opens the game up so much. Um, Duncan Robson had a good game, which is something that, that you're maybe excited about going into game six, that maybe he gets a little bit longer of a leash to get more minutes and stuff. But this is a really rough watch if you're a Miami Heat fan. As a neutral fan in all of this, I'm excited either way because I, I want people to continue to recognize that no matter what happens for the rest of the series, we will be seeing history. If the Boston Celtics come back from down 0-3, well, that's the first team in history to ever do that in the NBA. If the Miami Heat close out this series, then they're one of the few teams to be an eight seed and make it to the finals. I know last video I mentioned uh, the the Knicks, and I forgot 
or didn't recognize it. The Knicks actually won the conference finals and ended up in the finals, which is a part of history that's past my brain because I, I was barely born back then. <laughs> but they could be one of the few teams as an eight seed to make it to the finals. So as a neutral fan, this is just good because at this point, I mean, if the Miami Heat have won game four, we basically would have had four to six, seven games left of basketball for the year. And I don't want that. I feel like it was just yesterday I was at the, the Warriors ring ceremony, you know, taking it all in that I'm here for part of history and the season is close to over. So I'm taking all games, even if it is a game like this that maybe wasn't entertaining to watch. If you didn't watch the second half at all this game, you ain't miss a single thing. You know what I'm saying? But more basketball is better than no basketball. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the next game in a few nights. A couple uh, videos ago, I was telling y'all that we did an icy collaboration um, with Enjoy Basketball. And I just want to give my, my thanks to y'all because we sold out in like five hours, which is ridiculous. Every time we do a merch drop, I'm always so appreciative and, and surprised at the amount of support y'all really show. I mean, we had hundreds of people on the site before it even went live. Just y'all just waiting in line so you could be one of the first people to get something. So I appreciate you, man. And I know I got a lot of tweets, a lot of DMs on Instagram about people missing the drop. And I apologize for that, uh, especially when you come to like a, a deal where you're collaborating with a different brand. It's not always in your hands, the amount of quality that you get or quantity that you get. But it, it does show us for whoever we collaborate with next, like, hey, we had this amount of units and we sold out in five hours, so let's up that times 20% or whatever so more people, you know, can get the, the, the drop. So, again, I just want to thank y'all for all the support. The link is in the description to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. We drop Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, right now, we're on a roll to 50,000 um, newsletter readers, which is such a crazy number to say aloud because, uh, again, we're, we're in the world of, like, digital and everything. So to have close to 50,000 people that are actively reading instead of, like, watching a YouTube video like this is cool. So join in while, while you – you basically join in at the ground floor because we, like, a year and a half into this. So we still uh, new. So I, I just know I appreciate you, and we'll, we'll be talking ball soon.